thank you very much. God has done it again. This is the doing of the Lord. It is marvelous in our sight. This is God. And we say thank you to him. The one who can pick you from the miry clay and set your feet on a higher ground. Thank you, God. To my family, to my friends, to my supporters, to media houses, to Ike, the unpredictable, and his team, to King David Music Production, 1615 Media, to everyone, Alodia and Cap Farm, thank you for making this possible, for the cash, for the support, to everyone that turned up tonight, thank you. Cash, But thank you so much. Thank you. Listen, I, I am short of words, and I'm just glad that God made a way for us to be here tonight. And to crown it with this, I am grateful. Thank you, Team DH. Thank you. Thank you to everyone that has made this possible. Listen, I'm talking too much. God bless you. To all the musicians, to all that were in this category with me, to everyone out there who is doing gospel and can't find your way, I can tell you confidently that you can still do Jesus. Charlie, the experience is incredible. You know, every musician's experience or their best moment is when people are singing and jumping to your song. So this is one of the best experiences I've had. Wow, here on the fifth edition of the Kafam Music Awards. Well, I know that you've been in town for some time now. Yeah. What is happening here? What is keeping you in the UK? Uh, well, actually, I came not too long ago, okay. but my family is keeping me here. Yeah, because uh, I have family here and you know, they've been supporting me, they've been feeding me, see the way I've gone big. <laughs> Amazing performance. Uh-huh. Hey, Spanish time. <laughs> How was it? How was it? I had a good time. The performance was amazing. The crowd was crazy. Yeah. The response from the crowd, and I won an award. Congratulations! For the Afrobeat song of the year. Thank you so much. And thank you to everybody that came out. Okay. Good. that between love and money which one would you choose you know this question came up on drive time yesterday <laughs> and I was so controversial between yeah. love and money yeah i value love more than money but you cannot just use you can't use money to go and buy tomatoes in the market mm. you know what i'm saying mm. money is also important it's not the most important it's not the most crucial but it is important you can't take it out of the equation they're both important but i value love more Okay, let's move on. <laughs> yeah, let's move on to the next question. This one says that between heaven on earth and money on money on heaven, which which means the heaven won't be here, the upstairs. Yeah. So between getting money on earth and getting money up there, which one would you prefer? Ah, but that's so easy. Getting money up there. I mean, like, if I'm assured that I'm going to heaven, because we all don't know whether we are going that's, to heaven or not. That's We're all, sure you know, is. working our salvation. You know. Mm. With fear and trembling. <laughs> so, I mean, if you are assured that you're going to get to heaven... The, the assurance is what you don't, you don't have. You're not guaranteed now. I'm not guaranteed So, that. it means that you might, get, you might not even get there in the first place. So, abandoning the money here on earth and you going and not getting into heaven is a... It's a tight one, <laughs> it's, right? That's, it's a a tight that's one. where the problem is, actually. <laughs> it's a very tight one. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're not guaranteed. You don't yeah. know the criteria God is going to use to judge you. Yeah. To get into heaven before you even get the money. Yeah. But the money is, yeah. That's 
a test, though. <laughs> but you know, they said money is the root of all evil. We want the root. <laughs> <laughs> you want the root for yourself. No, I'll choose heaven. I'll choose heaven. Because I think that for me, I mean, I'm not very materialistic. Uh, I always tell people, people think that, you know, I, I drive a nice car and you save. And then there are ways of getting loans to do some of these things, okay. you know. And it's not everything that you buy high-end at boutiques. There are places where you can buy things which are, you know, um, not too expensive. You just mix and match. And then once you look presentable, that's it. But sometimes when you look presentable with clothes that are not expensive, you look expensive, you know. So it's all, it's all about how you present yourself. Yeah. All right. So let's move on. You know, I've been wondering what South America would look like if nobody gave a damn about coke or communism. Famous quote by Daniel Craig in his second James Bond movie, Quantum of Solace. For 15 years, Daniel has carried and played out the 007 character with pride. But after five movies, he's bowing out. What a sit. And final one, no time to die. In Ghana, the UK's High Commissioner was kind enough to host a viewing session at the Silver Bed Cinemas, inviting friends, diplomats, and some high profile dignitaries to share some Bond moments and also watch the film. So I think he's been a really great James Bond. He's made it a bit more serious than perhaps some of the some of them in the old days were. Uh, but you know, action-packed, uh, cool, calm, collected. He's done such an incredible job so far, and you know, really, really great. But I think also like it's a good time to see a new face. I am not the biggest fan of Daniel Craig. Um, my biggest James Bond actor is Roger Moore. Okay. I like a bit of the darling boy and then the action boy. I think my favorite James Bond actor is Sean Connery. Okay. Because he brings some intellect, some oomph into the acting mm -hmm. that, is, that uh, Craig doesn't show. I just, I just love him and the way he plays the role in, in the movie. And not just James Bond movies, in all movies that he plays, I mean, they turn out to be my favorite. I would definitely remember him for all the stunts and all the cool moves and I just love the way he talks. He's absolutely so sexy and like he's quite the man. He, he was smooth. I've heard that he really showed up in this one so I'm really looking forward to it and I'm sure everyone else is and yeah. He's been the best one. He's brought up, he's brought an edge, he's brought some muscle. He's a, he's a real British boy really. The others are a bit fancy. This guy is a, a street fighter and, that, and, and, that, and that's a true picture of, who, of, uh, of the modern Britain I think. Uh, I think so. It's kind of that evolution over time, kind of tailoring to what you know the public expects as, as kind of society has evolved, making it that little bit more edgy. Um, you know, don't get me wrong, the old classics I still love. Sean Connery, amazing. Who doesn't love Sean Connery? There have been different storylines, but the, the, the point is when you become a fanatic, you're always hoping to see certain things. Uh, a drastic change will not make it as interesting as it is. No, I don't think they should change the script. Uh, the, it, it has a cult following, like he says. It's done very well. So why change it uh, if it's not broken? I think it'd be nice to modernize it. Yeah, I think uh, there's time for some twists, but in a way, the Daniel Craig has brought that, that mod uh, uh, a modern twist to it. The James Bond character has been played by six actors since 1962. Sean Connery, George Lazenby, Sarah Jamore, Timothy Dalton, Pierce Brosnan, and Daniel Craig. As he bows out, the search for the next 007 agent is on. Who's your bet on? Idris Elba? Yeah, I mean, why not? We should have a, a black James Bond. And Idris Elba just fits the slot just like that. Personally, I'd love for it to be a woman. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. If it's not a woman, I'd love for it to be Idris Elba. <laughs> I feel so happy because after his last movie, I'm the next 007. <laughs> Quite like potentially Tom Hardy. That could be an interesting choice. I don't think Idris Elba would make the cut. I don't know, I don't know. It's a tough call, tough call. I want a new James Bond, but I don't want a black James Bond. Why though? Why? Why don't you want a black James Bond? I mean, to be honest, right, the, uh, the James Bond story written by Ian Fleming is, is written about a Scottish spy. 
Um, so it's a story. I'm black. I like black people to go up and all of that. But this is a story that follows a sequence. Don't you think that would that would? I mean, it would it would it would bring some diversity. Yeah, but, but you see, the role of James Bond and how he has been described over time cannot be changed at this point. It just defeats the narrative. You know, we look at James Bond and we want to see that kind of you know spy. And I don't think bringing a black guy fits that role. The British spy is not really. I disagree. I'm sure, Kojo, you disagree too. I totally disagree. I was going to offer myself. I think I'm going to be the perfect James Bond. <laughs>